Meanwhile, Moderna's CEO says its vaccine will protect against two known variants of COVID-19, but it plans to start human studies of a booster shot for the strain that we just mentioned from South Africa. Stefan Bonsell spoke with Bloomberg's Alex Steele and Guy Johnson. The South Africa strain has a very high level of antibody. It is actually higher than the level of antibody of people that have been naturally infected. So we believe it is protective right now. The thing that we don't know, and it's really unknowable scientifically for the next few months, is how this is going to look like midterm. I'm talking six months, 12 months, 18 months. We are not worried at all for the short term. But what you don't know, especially with the elderly, is how much the antibody is going to decay in their body. And because, as you say, the South Africa is a bit lower than the one in the UK or the one circulating the rest of Europe and the US, we want to be cautious. And so what we have done is we've announced this morning we are launching a new vaccine containing the strain first identified in the Republic of South Africa, the B1351. And that product is going to be in the clinic very quickly. Our goal will be to have it ready as a cautionary step. It might not be needed, but we cannot be wrong. We have to be sure if that become a problem in the fall to have a boost, a single dose to be given at least to people that are high risk like the elderly. I, I, what is the manufacturing um, lineup when it comes to that booster? Like you mentioned the fall. What if they haven't received their initial vaccine yet? Like how, how does that happen in terms of distribution and then also in terms of uh, production for you guys? Yes, yeah, so the amazing thing about mRNA technology, it's a platform. And so it's the same chemistry for the mRNA molecule between the current one and potentially this new one. It is the same chemistry for the lipid we put around it. It's the same machine uh, that we use, the same people. So it's totally interchangeable, whatever we make. So our plan right now is to continue to make as many COVID-19 vaccines as authorized in the UK, US, and Europe as we can to supply those countries. We are going to do the clinical experiment on the side so that we could be ready in late summer, early fall, if that strain was required, to basically switch the vaccine to the new one, again, for the boost. Because the boost could be a lower dose that will increase significantly our supply if that was the case. Stefan, as you say, from, an, from a messenger RNA point of view, the switch is a relatively straightforward one. From a regulatory point of view, is it the same? So it is, of course, a new path for all of us. If you look, I think there's a good template, which is what happened with seasonal flu. For seasonal flu, where, as you know, manufacturers have to go very quickly, regulatory agencies have agreed to look at antibody levels. And so you could see a world where we do very quickly a boost to the participant of a phase one of last year. If you recall, the phase one started on March 16 last year. So we're very close, able to dose those people with a boost, a single dose of that new strain. We're going to get a sense, do we need 25 or 50 or 100 microgram? I remind you, the current vaccine is 100 micrograms, so we think we might be very good with a lower dose because the immune system is already primed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do most probably a couple thousand participants in the phase three to boost those in the phase three. Because it's only a dose and because you can get the antibody within a month, you can see how the timeline can work very well to be ready for the end summer, early fall with this new strain, again, if it is required. Uh, you had mentioned that it, your current vaccine seems to be successful against the UK strain. What about the Brazilian variant? The Brazilian strain is being analyzed. What we do is we follow all those mutations we have since last January of 2020. There's been a lot of mutations so far. They were not important. But now the virus, you know, is evolving and the virus wants to survive. So more and more people are infected. And as we're going to get more and more people vaccinated, the virus is going to keep on evolving, which is why we need to keep chasing it in case we need a new vaccine. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.